Hello everybody, this is Lori Anderson, contributor for FreedomOutpost.com and host for Resurrect the Republic Truth Radio broadcast on RBN Network. wanted to bring to your attention that even though President-elect Donald Trump is not in office, Obama has all of a sudden changed his tune about Al-Qaeda or Anwar al-Sharia as it so goes or as it is being reported right now. Just hours after the Trump visits the White House, Obama does 180 degrees on Syria and orders military to hunt down and kill al-Nusra, also known as al-Qaeda. This was reported uh, by the newsroom November the 11th, 2016. The people loyal to the Syrian government are happy with Donald Trump winning the U.S. election. At the passport counter, a Syrian officer's face lit up when he saw an American traveler. Congratulations on your new president giving an energetic thumbs up, Mr. Trump, he said, would be good for Syria. The first significant step of the new administration comes while Trump is not even in office. Obama, selfishly concerned with his historic legacy, suddenly makes a 180 degree turn and starts to implement Trump's policies. Let's consider the initial position. Asked about Aleppo in October debate with Clinton, Trump said it was a humanitarian disaster, but the city had basically fallen. Clinton, he said, was take, talking in favor of rebels without knowing who they are. The rebels fighting Assad in western Syria include nationalists fighting under the Free Syrian Army banner, some of them trained in a CIA-backed program, and jihadists such as the group formerly known as Al-Qaeda-linked Nusra Front. Yes, the same Benghazi attackers. The Obama administration, through the CIA, led by Saudi asset John Brennan, fed weapons, training, and billions of dollars to the moderate rebels. These then turned around and either gave the CIA gifts to al-Qaeda in Syria, also known as Jabhat al-Nusra, or joined it themselves. The scheme was no secret at all, and Russia, as well as Syria, pointed this out several times. The Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov negotiated with U.S. Secretary of State Kerry, who promised to separate the moderate rebels from al-Qaeda. Kerry never delivered. Instead, he falsely accused Russia of committing atrocities that never happened. The CIA kept the upper hand within the Obama administration and continued its nefarious plans. That changed the day the President-elect Trump set foot into the White House. While Obama met Trump, in the Oval Office, new policies prepared beforehand were launched. The policies were held back until after the election and would likely not have been revealed or implemented if Clinton had won. The U.S. declared that from now on, it will fight against al-Qaeda in Syria. President Obama has ordered the Pentagon to find and kill leaders of al-Qaeda-linked group in Syria. That administration has largely ignored until now and that has been at the vanguard of the fight against the Syrian government. U.S. officials said that shift is likely to accelerate once President-elect Donald Trump takes office, possibly in direct cooperation with Moscow. U.S. officials who opposed the decision to go after al-Nusra, wider leadership, warned the United States would effectively be doing the Assad government's bidding by weakening a group on the front line of the counter-Assad fight. Defense Secretary Ashton B. Carter and other Pentagon leaders initially resisted the idea of devoting more Pentagon surveillance aircraft and armed drones against al-Nusra. Ash Carter is together with John Brennan, the major anti-Russian force in the Obama administration. He is the U.S. weapon industry promoter and anti-Russia campaign, which helps to sell the U.S. weapons to NATO allies in Europe and is largely of his doing. He saw al-Qaeda in Syria as a welcome proxy force against Russia. But Obama has now shut down that policy. We are not yet sure that this is for good, but the above Washington Post account is not the only signal. The U.S. Department of Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control, OFAC, took action today to disrupt al-Nusra Front's military recruitment and financing operations. Specifically, OFAC design, designated four key al-Nusra front leaders, Al Abdullah Mohammed bin Salim al Mosini, Jamal Hassin Zakini Abu Jashari, and Osef Ahmad Far Fari al -Aq. 
pursuant to Executive Order 13224, which targets terrorists and those providing support to terrorists or acts of terrorism. These designations were taken in coordination with the U.S. Department of State, which today named Jabhat Faith al-Shalim as an alias of al-Nusra Front, al-Qaeda's affiliate in Syria. Abdullah Mahad bin Salim al mulusini was designated for acting for, on behalf of, and providing support and services to or in support of al-Nusra Front. This is a major change in U.S. policy. Nusra will from now on be on the run, not only from Russian and Syrian attacks, but also from the intelligence and military capabilities of the United States. The newly designated al mushalini a Saudi cleric, is Nusra's chief ideologue in Syria. Some considered him the new Osama bin Laden. Here he is on the left, arm in arm with chief al-Qaeda in Syria propagandist and journalist, Hadi Abdullah, Hadi Abdullah, friend of the designated Al Qaeda terrorist Mussolini, has just received the 2016 Press Freedom Prize from the CIA Soros financed regime change influence operation Reporters Without Borders. Might this mean that Hadi, Hadi Abdullah is himself a CIA asset? He would not be the first such journalist in Syria. Obama, obviously, as a direct consequence of the Trump election, now ordered the Pentagon to wage war on al-Qaeda in Syria, just as the Russians do. This after five years of nearly unlimited U.S. support for al-Qaeda and its moderate Syrian affiliates. It is not yet known what new orders, if any, Obama will give to the CIA. Will the CIA follow these policies or will it again try to counter the Pentagon policies in Syria? It is unusual that the Washington Post report about above about this new direction includes no comment, commenting voice from the CIA. Why is such missing? Russia and Syria will welcome the new Obama policies should they come to fruit on the ground. Hillary Clinton had planned and announced to widen the conflict in Syria and with Russia and Iran. Obama would surely not have acted against such policies if she had been elected. But with Trump winning and thereby a new policy on the horizon, he now changed course to a direction that will provide continuity when Trump takes over. Not only is Trump kicking a black family out of his longtime lime-washed home. He also ends the U.S. government's support for the disenfranchised jihadis in Syria and elsewhere, this even months before taking office. He really is the menace that we have all been warned about. While this is a good development and will put an end to the shenanigans the U.S. has been undertaking inside Syria, one wonders if Obama is doing this because he sees the light, sees the error of his ways, or if he's now hunting down to kill the only people who can testify that the entire Syria debacle was started by the United States to begin with, covering his tracks. Or one does wonder if he all of a sudden has changed his ways because 18 U.S. Code 2381. Over here in the U.S. Code for Treason, it says whoever owing allegiance to the United States levies war against them or adheres to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort within the United States or elsewhere, is guilty of treason and shall suffer death or shall be in prison not less than five years and fined under this title but not less than $10,000 and shall be incapable of holding any office under the United States. The uh, Obama regime um, for many years has worked very hard to expand the Muslim Brotherhood and has armed, funded, and trained um, jihadists, al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, ISIS, ISIL, you name it. They are many different names, same faction, and they have been arming, funding, and training out of 
uh, the Obama administration, the Obama White House, and Obama has openly supported these so-called moderate rebels, which are simply terrorists. It is very well known. And it has been very well documented, including in the Citizens Commission on Benghazi report. So one does wonder. We know it's not because he's trying to do the right thing. So what is your opinion? What do you think? Do you think President Obama is doing this to do the right thing? Do you think he is now reversing role just because Donald Trump is going to be president? Or do you think it is a combination of because Donald Trump has won the presidency and will become president that President Obama now fears the possibility of being charged with treason because he adhered to our enemy. He gave them aid and comfort elsewhere and according to 18 U.S. Code 2381, that is treason. Tell me what you think. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the topics that I am covering. Share my videos. Subscribe. Let me know. Thank you. God bless you. As always, watch your backs and check your facts. Semper Fidelis and good night.